Welcome back to episode two of our three-part series on engine repowering. Now in our last episode, we talked a lot about what it takes to get the old engines out. Today, we're going to be going through the process of putting the new engines in. But before we get to that, I do believe we've got a promise to fulfill. My friends, say hello to Jarrett Bayhole 48, Iron Leader. We're in the high bay, and I'm standing in the cockpit of Jarrett Bay Hole 48 Iron Leader. And one of the first things that catches your eye on a transom is the teak work. Transoms take a tremendous amount of abuse from the sun, salt water, billfish, gas, and occasionally even docks. In time, they get to looking pretty rough. This one, as you can see, has been restored beautifully. Last episode, we covered in pretty good detail all the steps it would take to get old engines out of the boat. Today, in glorious simplicity, we do it all in reverse, only minus the Sawzall. And as you can see, the engines are in, so let's take a quick look at what it took to get them here. So what I have here is an engine isolation mount. They are, as their name infers, used to isolate the vibration from the engine so it doesn't shake the boat so hard, but they also have to be very precise in that they're used to critically align the engine in the shaft. Our engines are now in, and that means the next big steps can take place. And the first one is the reinstallation of the back bulkhead. Like the engine installation, reinstalling the back bulkhead is the same process as taking it out, only in reverse. The seams are all buttered up with epoxy. It's slid into place, and as you can see, there's a few random pieces that don't belong here. These blocks here are what we would call butt blocks or flush blocks. That makes sure that the bulkhead is aligned exactly where it had been originally. The little shims are used to wedge it in the exact location so that the window lines up exactly as it had been in the past. This back bulkhead was veneered with natural teak. And as you can see, there's a big wound right here, but that's not gonna be a problem because this whole back bulkhead is gonna be reincarnated as faux teak. So we're down here at the basin, but before we wrap this episode up, let's revisit the name. Iron Leader evokes a lot of images in my head and more than a few questions, but the real question is, what does Iron Leader actually mean? Being the test platform for the brand new Caterpillar C32B 2400 engines, these engine blocks are made of iron. Technically, they're made of compacted graphite iron, which is sometimes also referred to as vermicular graphite iron. Now the word leader in Iron Leader has a double meaning. It signifies both the leader used in fishing tackle, which is essentially why these boats exist, as well as Caterpillar being an industry leader. Paired together, Iron Leader is a clever and bold assertion of Caterpillar's dominance in the world of diesel engines. That's it for today. Next time we see Iron Leader, she's gonna be in the water right back here, and we're gonna hear those big, beautiful caddy engines fire up for the first time. You won't wanna miss it. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>